Hey everyone, and welcome to this uh, licensing update. Um, I want to talk about a few things Copilot today. So um, consider this the Copilot update. Uh, there's a lot of information about Copilot lately, and I want to cover a few topics. I want to cover what exactly Microsoft 365 Copilot is. I want to show you um, something about um, uh, uh, yeah what Copilot has currently released already. And um, I want to talk a bit, obviously, about the licensing of Copilot. And finally, uh, I want to go through the Microsoft product terms because a lot of updates were made there. Um, so yeah, let me uh, get the screen up and then we can get started. Right, so this announcement is what I wanted to show first. What is Microsoft Copilot? And Microsoft calls it your everyday AI companion. And I was lucky to see um, a presentation lately about what Copilot exactly is, and it looks amazing. It um, yeah, does promise a lot of um, cool features that will help you uh, yeah, make your life a lot easier. Um, you can uh, just ask them to do certain things for you. Like if you have an Excel file, um, you need to present progress report to your manager. You can just ask it to create a um, yeah, PowerPoint presentations of an X amount of slides, and it will generate that and look very fancy. And you will just have to go through if all the data that's in the file actually is correct or not. And uh, if not, um, you just make a tiny few and edits to it and don't have to do the whole entire thing yourself. Um, this blog was uh, released um, last September 21st, so almost uh, two weeks ago, I guess. Um, and it talks about everything Copilot um, and, and it being your everyday AI companion. And the the uh, premise of the blog is that there's a new area of AI, one that is fundamentally changing how we relate to and benefit from technology. So they're taking the next step to unify and all the capabilities into a single experience that they call Microsoft Copilot. Um, it will be available for Windows 11, Microsoft 365, and in your web browser with Edge and Bing. And some of the things are already possible. So last week, Windows 11 got an update. and Copilot was included in it. Um, Microsoft 365 will follow in uh, November. Um, Edge and Bing are already uh, yeah, ready for Copilot as well. So they will roll out, uh, as I said, starting September 26 with Bing Edge and um, Copilot later in November. So it's got uh, 150 new features. The uh, Windows 11 update is one of the most ambitious that Microsoft has released in a long time, according to themselves. Um, Bing will add support for the latest DAL E3 model. And DAL E3, for those who don't know, this is their imaging uh, model. So you can just put in text to the Bing AI chat service. And I'll show you after this. Um, and you ask them to create certain uh, pictures for you. It will be able to do that. Um, yeah. So if you're interested in learning about all the features that Copilot has, well, it's 150 in total. So I wish you good luck to uh, going through all of them. Um, there's a video here that explains it, and it's quite a good video. So I do recommend if you check it out if you didn't already. Um, Copilot in Windows in preview empowers you to create faster, uh, complete tasks with ease and lessens your cognitive load. Paint has been enhanced with AI for drawing. Photos has also been enhanced with AI, including new features to make editing your photos a breeze. Um, the snipping tool, ClipChamp, Notepad, uh, Outlook for Windows, modernized file explorer, new text authoring, and Windows backup all have new features um, having to do with uh, and the AI services of Microsoft. Um, and what I want to go through now is the, the new update to Bing, so the Bing AI that they released. So you can go to uh, bing.com slash chat. Um, it will probably give you a prompt if you're in, at a strict browsing session that you need to open up. But Bing chat um, now does work and it works quite well. So you can ask it uh, all kinds of inputs, like you can uh, just ask it to, to write things for you, but you can also ask it to generate things for you. So you can ask uh, 
to generate um, pictures that uh, contain the co-pilot logo for use on socials. And we can see what Microsoft then, uh, or Bing in this case, does with it. So it shows you it's searching for co-pilot logo social media, co Microsoft co-pilot logo, and then it starts the output. Microsoft co-pilot has the logo that is nearly identical to the current Microsoft 365 logo. The only difference being that Windows Copilot logo only uses shades of blue, whereas Microsoft 365, I don't know. So it will give you, and it's doing something funny here right now, but it will give you some prompt about what they found in around this topic. Um, it should eventually also start generating pictures, but um, well, this wasn't in the test that I did earlier, which is quite funny to see here. Um, so I'm gonna just ask it to stop responding, but you can input anything you want. So create a logo for a coffee company called the Black Bean. And let's see if it uh, wants to generate anything for us right now. Oh, it will output a nice text logo. So I'm going to stop with this as well. There we go. So it will have searched the internet to find some uh, cool pictures. And then based on that, it will generate um, some mockups for a logo. So the black bean with the coffee cup, um, the black bean uh, with a bean in the middle, uh, a coffee filter thing. Um, what this is, I'm not sure, but maybe also something with a coffee stock or something. So it will be able to generate all these pictures for you, which is quite cool. Um, that is the doll e implementation that um, I just showed you in the, the review. Um, now, everybody would probably be wondering how to license Copilot. So this uh, past few days slash weeks, um, we have been getting some initial results from Microsoft on uh, insights into how they will license. Nothing official yet, um, and I was able to get my hands on some details, um, which I shared um, out on my LinkedIn page that you see, see here on screen. Um, I, I uh, made two posts about it. The first one, uh, was quite a shocking um, um, find for us that um, in the enterprise agreement, if you want to buy Microsoft 365 Copilot in the enterprise agreement, it will require a 300 seat minimum. So Microsoft is launching um, this as a committed offer where you have a minimum procurement of 300 seats. The price will be $30 per user per month. And we've already seen some initial quotes that this is indeed the case. And we haven't been able to see a pricing waterfall as of yet. So there's no differentiation between a level A EA customer and a level D EA customer. The price will be $30 per user per month for the amount of users that you want to do. Um, there's also been some talk about customers procuring the service already, but not getting access until three, four, five months in, which is strange as well, but um, that is just what it is. Um, the other items that they released was that it will be available in the EA, EAS, but also in MCA Enterprise, which is um, the service where you currently would procure, for instance, um, Azure under, under MCA. Um, not a lot of other licenses are currently available. I think Windows 365 might be, and um, but they will release Copilot here as well. So they're updating the, the availability um, of a direct, direct MCA purchase from Microsoft um, um, uh, with Copilot. Um, it will also not be on any published price list. So uh, LSPs won't have uh, access to the price. This might have to do with the 300 seat minimum because um, if they publish it on a price list, an LSP would be able to order it in, uh, via the Microsoft uh, standard systems and they might not be able to uh, um, yeah, keep that 300 seat minimum purchase um, 
above board and uh, potentially LSPs might order lesser amounts. I don't exactly know, or they just don't want you to know the, um, uh, uh, the price that Copilot would cost, but only show you the final price, the $30 per user per month. Um, those were the initial insights. What was interesting to learn is that with the release of Windows 11 last uh, September, that um, the uh, Windows 11 Copilot wasn't released in the EU, and I posted about this yesterday. Uh, apparently, the Digital Markets Act blocked this because Microsoft, uh, so Microsoft could not release it. Um, why did they block it? Because they are not fully. Um, on par on if Copilot is a service that they can and want to offer within uh, the EU. Um, that being said, the, the link that I shared, and it's down here in the comments, um, does state that there's ways to get around it, but that you might also not really want to do that because you might be opening up um, Microsoft to any um, actions for uh, compliance. So I'd be careful with that. Check out with your organization if this is something that you can or cannot do uh, and how to handle this. Now, as a final point, I want to talk about um, the uh, update to the Microsoft product terms. Microsoft has released the uh, um, yeah, terms and conditions, basically, for what they call Microsoft Generative AI Services. <clears throat> and Microsoft Generative AI Services are um, yeah, basically just that. Um, they define this as um, uh, an online service or feature thereof that provides output content using generative artificial intelligence technologies. So basically what Copilot does, um, they set up a responsible use policy uh, or acceptable use policy. Um, you uh, have some limitations on what you're able to do. So um, if you violate acceptable use policy for online services uh, or the Azure o OpenAI code of conduct, then uh, they might terminate your access to the service. You cannot use the Microsoft Generative AI services to um, reverse engineer their products. Um, you cannot use the Microsoft Generative AI service to extract uh, um, data um from a microsoft generative ai service so you cannot use the service to extract data from the service funnily enough and um there's a limit on customer use of output content so you um will not use and will not allow third parties to use microsoft generative ai service or output content so the, the stuff that comes out of the service um, to create train or improve a similar or competing product so you cannot create your own product that might um, yeah, compete with Microsoft on this by using their own services. Then what is very interesting, data use and access. So um, what Microsoft states here is that um, you cannot or you do not use uh, input or output content themselves that you generate to retrain or train or improve their own services. Um, so anything that you do, Microsoft will not use to train their own Microsoft uh, generative AI services or Azure Open AI services, unless specifically called out by that service. Um, Microsoft will also process and store customer data submitted to the service for purposes of monitoring uh, for and preventing abusive or harmful uses or outputs of the service. So that means that they will be able to track or they will get notified that notified if you are trying to do something abusive or harmful with one of these services. So if you're using Copilot, for instance, or Bing Chat Enterprise for the wrong reasons, you will get penalized and might be losing access to the service. Finally, data flows is very interesting. Um, data may be uh, stored and processed outside of your tenant's geographic region, compliance boundary, or national cloud instance, unless service-specific terms or product documentation for given Microsoft Generative AI service states otherwise. This means that it might be that your service, uh, that your data can go from the EU, for instance, to the US. Can go. They don't say it, it will. It can. Um, this is quite 
in, well, not in line with GDPR regulations in the EU, for instance, right now. So it might be a big red flag at the moment, but will remain to be seen what the actual co-pilot uh, product entry will say about this. Well, there's some other items like intellectual property rights and Microsoft will always um, yeah, maintain commitment. We call it the co-pilot copyright commitment to help you and def help defend you up in, against third party claims. But there's some requirements in order for them to do so, like, um, you cannot have disabled, evaded, disrupted, or interfered with the content filters uh, for the meta prompts. Um, you do not modify, use, or distribute the output content in a manner that it knows or should know is likely to infringe, or you have sufficient rights to use the input uh, in connection with the covered product. So the meaning that you are allowed to uh, be able to do what you are doing um, with the service. And the claim does not allege that the output content as used in commerce or the course of trade violates a third party's trademark. So this is a very interesting update. Um, yeah, I, it remains to be seen um, what the coming weeks will bring. But um, what we see now in the product terms, there's a lot of food for thought. Uh, we hope you enjoy this type of content and we will catch you on the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.